Welcome to Health and Wellness. I'm your host, Kearney Warren, and today's episode features Dr. Adele Schneider. Dr. Schneider is a Director of Clinical Genetics and the Lead Researcher for Tay-Sachs Disease at Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Today, we're discussing Tay-Sachs Disease and the populations who are at most at risk. Dr. Schneider, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to speak with us today about Tay-Sachs Disease. Tay-Sachs Disease is considered a genetic disorder where there's a enzyme that's missing. Can you tell our viewers or further explain to our view viewers what that enzyme is and how it affects the body? Uh, Tay-Sachs disease is a very severe neurodegenerative disease that is caused by the absence of the enzyme hexosaminidase A. This enzyme acts in the body to break down toxic substances and when the enzyme is not there, the toxic substances accumulate particularly in the brain and result in the loss of skills and finally the death of these children. It is a disease that was initially thought to be very common only in Ashkenazi Jews and it is common in Ashkenazi Jews but we have recently in the Philadelphia area seen a number of children with Tay-Sachs disease born to the Irish. And that's why we're focusing on Tay-Sachs disease in the Irish in our research at the moment. So let's, let's talk a bit more about um, the new findings of the Irish population um, being at a higher risk for developing Tay-Sachs disease. What are some of the services that are offered here at Einstein? Well, Einstein Genetics is a full-service genetics division, and we offer services basically from cradle to grave, because we're a general hospital. So we can see babies, we can see older people, and what we're doing now for Tay-Sachs disease is very specifically a research project, looking for people who are very connected to Ireland, uh, who have at least three Irish grandparents. And we are testing their hexosaminidase A enzyme, that is the enzyme that's deficient in Tay-Sachs, to look for carriers, and if we find carriers, then we are looking for the specific gene change in the DNA that's called a mutation. And ultimately, what we're hoping to do is have a scientific study on which to base a carrier rate for Tay-Sachs in the Irish, which has never actually been done with any kind of academic reporting. And then we also would like to be able to give an idea of the specific mutations so that perhaps there can be guidelines like there are for the Ashkenazi Jews to screen the Irish for Tay-Sachs disease. So how does Tay-Sachs present itself? Well, the babies are born looking normal. You wouldn't know until they're about three or four months when they're not making progress and then they start to lose skills. So usually the babies are not diagnosed until later on in the first year of life when they're just not quite doing what the parents ex expect them to do. And then they start to lose skills, they become less connected to the environment, they stop feeding, many of them need a feeding tube, they stop smiling, they stop moving, and in the end they really can't do much of anything. Uh, their vision deteriorates, um, and they survive because parents take wonderful care of them. Mostly they succumb ultimately to a seizure or pneumonia usually between the ages of three and five. So <clears throat> there isn't a cure right now for Tay-Sachs disease, or are there any types of uh, treatments that are out there? The only treatment is really palliative right now to keep the child comfortable, to treat the seizures, but there is definitely a lot of research going on. There are sheep called Jacob's sheep who have a disease like Tay-Sachs disease, and they're using them to try and uh, do gene therapy. So there are gene therapy trials that are in the process of being done, but so far nothing has uh, become available for living people yet. Now we have some diagrams here. I want to move in to talk about um, the passing of the genes from a parent to a child. Can you discuss 
how um, a child is inherits the disease? Yes. So one of the basic facts we need to know is that we are all a combination of our parents' genes. And for every trait that we have, we have one gene from the mom and one from the dad. So that's how we're a bit like our mom and a bit like our dad. So to be a carrier for one of these diseases, these are autosomal recessive diseases where a carrier is a healthy person. So a carrier has one of the genes that is working and one that is not working. And that's why the carrier is healthy because the healthy gene is producing enough enzyme to keep the person healthy. If two people who are carriers for the same gene, and that's important because some people will come to us and say, oh, we're both carriers and we have to look at them and say, for what? If one of you is a carrier for Tay-Sachs and the other one for cystic fibrosis, you're not at risk to have an affected child for either one. So if both parents are carriers for Tay-Sachs disease, there is a one in four chance with every pregnancy to have a baby with Tay-Sachs. Two out of four that they would be carriers just like the parents and one out of four that they wouldn't even have the Tay-Sachs gene as a carrier. And that's standard inheritance for recessive uh, inheritance. And if you remember the Punnett Square in high school, it's based on that. So anybody in any family where both parents are carriers, uh, <clears throat> there is a chance that you might not ever have a child with Tay-Sachs disease because it's a three out of four chance that you wouldn't, but one in four that you would. And sometimes families will have a couple of healthy kids and then have a baby with Tay-Sachs because each pregnancy is an independent risk. So do you recommend genetic counseling for uh, people of Irish descent, families of Irish descent? Um, I recommend genetic counseling <clears throat> for everybody before they have babies. I think preconception genetic counseling is very important because people are not always sure of their ethnic background and when a genetic counselor talks to them about their family history they may find things other than Tay-Sachs. They may, may find a high incidence of cancer and there's cancer genetics where you can actually help people by doing gene tests. There are other reasons to do screening for other things. Uh, so I think preconception genetic counseling for everybody is a good idea. In the Irish, it's not generally known that there's a higher carrier rate for Tay-Sachs disease. So what we're really trying to do is to educate the medical and the lay community about this and try and have those people tested. So testing for Tay-Sachs disease also can be done in different ways. And the best test for our purposes in an Irish person is to do the enzyme straight up. Because if you do the gene mutation panels that are available through some of the labs, they're looking at specific gene changes mostly in the Ashkenazi Jewish community because the directives from the American College of OBGYN, the American College of Medical Genetics all say test the Jewish population for Tay-Sachs. Nobody says test the Irish. So if you do the mutation panels and most of the labs have them, you're testing for Jewish mutations or changes in the gene which won't show up in an Irish person. But the enzyme, doesn't matter your, en your ethnicity, will show a low enzyme if you're a carrier. So that's what we're trying to do, is to educate people to do that. At some point, there will be sequencing of the whole gene. So to explain what that is, if a gene is a book, and you're looking at mutations, you're looking at this page and that page and that page to see if there are changes. If you're sequencing it, you're reading the whole book. So it's a much more extensive, more detailed look at the gene. And ultimately, that will be the way to do it, but it's still expensive. Let's talk about the specific services that Einstein has for Tay-Sachs disease. Well, we, we have followed children with Tay-Sachs disease because we have pediatric genetics. But for the most part, what we're seeing is young couples coming in for screening before they have children so that they can have genetic counseling and testing. And if they find out that they are both carriers for Tay-Sachs disease or another disease, then we offer them counseling about their reproductive options. As the lead researcher at Einstein for Tay-Sachs disease, are there any new findings um, that our viewers should, should be aware of? Well, 
The only finding we have is that it is hard to educate a community that has never heard of Tay-Sachs disease. And it's been very slow getting our numbers up. So the more people that hear about it and contact us about screening, we are happy to screen anywhere in the community. Uh, we are finding some carriers. We don't have any numbers yet because the study is still underway. But we are very anxious to get more people signed up so that we can come out with some kind of guideline. Referring to getting more numbers and to make people more aware of the disease, I understand that there's an event on March 17th um, that Einstein is sponsoring. Can you tell our viewers about that? Yeah, on March 17th, we're doing a screening here at Einstein outside the genetics division. So it's in a fairly high traveled area and we will be offering genetic counseling and consenting for the um, event because this is a research project. Everybody has to be counseled and consented and blood draws for enzyme. If you are interested in coming on the 17th to be screened, the screening is from 3 to 4.30 in the afternoon. Levy 2 West, outside genetics at Einstein. You can call for more information to 484-636-4197 or go online to irish at tasex.org and sign up through that website. Walk-ins are welcome and we look forward to seeing you on the 17th. Are there any um, tools or informative pamphlets or books um, that families can uh, research for more information about the disease? Well, we do have a brochure that we hand out and if a family would like uh, to take a few of the brochures home and share it with their families, uh, we have this available. The website is info at irish.edu, I think. And no, it's info at tasex.org. Or you can go to einstein.edu, put in Tay-Sachs, and you'll get a lot of information. The other website is irish at tay-sachs.org. So there are a lot of choices. But if you go to the Einstein website, that's probably your best bet. Put in Tay-Sachs, and you'll get a video of one of our children who sadly passed away, um, and other information about the screening and future screenings as they come up. We're planning to do further screenings. We will be at the uh, Irish Festival in June. Um, and there are a number of other events coming up, which you can see on the Einstein website. Let's talk about this book, Tay-Sex Disease. Um, would you like to share some information uh, with our viewers about um, what this book is about? This book is really the history of Tay-Sex Disease, how it was initially described by doctors Tay and Sachs before there were any blood tests. And the way to make the diagnosis back then was to look in the eye of the child with Tay-Sachs disease and they would see what's called the cherry red spot, which is one of the diagnostic findings in Tay-Sachs on the back of the eye, you see this red spot. And that was how they made the diagnosis in these children that were losing skills. And they are the people that noticed that it was happening a lot in Jewish children. And this book also talks about the history of screening and how it was started in the early 70s. Uh, and the Jewish community took it up as one of their causes. People would line up for hours to get screened for Tay-Sachs disease. And as a consequence of that screening, very few Jewish babies are born with Tay-Sachs today. But now we're looking in other communities, such as the Irish <coughs> community, and finding that there are children being born with Tay-Sachs unexpectedly in communities that were not thought to be high risk. So other high risk communities include the Cajuns, French Canadians, Amish, and we also are finding out that in Gujarat in India, it appears to have a higher carrier rate. So given that it is ubiquitous, it's a severe disease with a high carrier rate in a lot of different populations, it would make sense for this to be something that everybody was screened for. The enzyme test is not an expensive test, but this is not something that is generally known or even suspected. So our job is really to go out there and educate people. So we're focusing on the Irish right now, but I think 
as we move forward, we're going to be educating everybody. You mentioned how Tay-Sachs was diagnosed in the past. I want to talk about the symptoms that parents can see, and then let's talk about how Tay-Sachs is diagnosed today. Well, <clears throat> parents with a newborn baby go to the pediatrician on a regular basis. And what they're looking for is progress in terms of what the baby is starting to do. The baby will smile and then roll over and start to sit up. Most of the babies with Tay-Sachs disease will stop, be stop developing before they're sitting. Parents will tell the doctor that they're thinking there's something wrong with the baby, the muscle tone isn't so good, and then the babies start to have trouble feeding and they're choking and feeding them becomes a real problem. And at that point, one would hope that the pediatrician is going to send them to a neurologist. The neurologist more than likely will look in the baby's eyes and see the cherry red spot. Send them maybe to an ophthalmologist who will look again and then they'll do the enzyme testing. So it's not something that the pediatrician is likely to do on his own. They're most likely going to send the child to a neurologist. But I just want to caution parents, not every child who has these symptoms has Tay-Sachs disease. While it seems common to me, it's really a very rare disease. So the chances of a child having Tay-Sachs disease who is delayed a little bit are very low. Parents shouldn't panic about that. But it's a good idea if your child isn't developing well to push the pediatrician to send your child and you to a neurologist. Thank you so much for taking time out today to uh, share with us information about Tay-Sachs disease. Einstein Medical Center is the only place that is focusing on Tay-Sachs disease and research in the Irish population. I'm your host, Kira Warren, and thank you for watching.